Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. So welcome to the fall 2020 semester. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the class and how you will work your way through the assignments and get access to all the information that you need. To see all my videos about Kaggle, neural networks, and other AI topics, click the subscribe button and the bell next to it and select all to be notified of every new video. This semester, this course is going to be delivered entirely online. So if you are a Washington University student, you'll access this completely through Washington University Canvas. Now all of the course material is available on YouTube and also in internally in the WashU Kaltura system. So if you are from the public internet and are just following this course along, just work your way through all of the GitHub and, and other things there. You won't be able to submit assignments, but it is, all the information is, is publicly available. For WashU students, on our first synchronous meeting, and those occur weekly, you'll be getting an announcement from me on how to join that via Zoom. I'll show you how to get into the WashU Canvas system so that you can access it through here. And all of the all of the course material is here and all of the assignments are here. You'll see all of your grades through the Canvas system. And you can always find the links to this. Just search on Jeff Heaton, my name, Wustel, W-U-S-T-L, the university. And right here is the main page for the, the class. All the links are here. The GitHub link is here, the link to WashU Canvas, all of that. The GitHub material, is divided up by modules. We're starting with module one. So when we meet online on the 14th, not very long from now, we'll go through all of this and you'll get that through the WashU Canvas system. Let me just kind of review what is all going on with, with this class here. All of these GitHub Jupyter Notebooks, so there's 14 modules in this course, each of them have five parts and each part is a Jupyter notebook. So that's 70 of these in all, plus, plus a few ancillary ones. You can click on any of these links. The video takes you to YouTube. The notebook takes you right back to this one, but you can get to all the other notebooks for this part, for this module. Now, YouTube is not available in every region of the world, in particular China. So if you're a WashU student and accessing these videos, use the Kaltura system that I'll show you, which is completely linked in on Canvas. That way you can, you should be able to fully access those videos from China or any other location. If you run into an issue with that, definitely reach out and let me know. There's also another couple of videos here that are useful to you how to how to submit assignments how to install so this is a technical course you're going to need to have a Python environment with tensorflow so that you're able to complete the assignments every one of these modules up here has this link that says open in Google Colab Google Colab is a cloud-based environment that allows you to run Jupyter Notebooks and has all of the correct versions of Python and TensorFlow installed for you. So this is good if you don't want to sit down and install all of this software on your local computer. You also get access to a GPU. Some of the code that we run in this class really benefits from a GPU. Things that would take hours without a GPU can take minutes with one. The GPU that they give you in Google Colab is actually pretty good. So if you just click on one of these links, what it'll do is open up Google Colab and you'll see here here it says Google Colab Pro. I am paying additional money to Google to have Colab Pro that gets me more RAM and it gets me a better GPU. That's up to you if you want to do that. I think it's around $10 a month. It's not it's not much. Uh, I think it's a very good a very good value and believe me even for things that I'm doing for my own study in machine learning I'm often using Google Colab Pro. The other thing that I work with a lot is a desktop machine that I built that has a high-end GPU in it. I've even got an entire video on building that machine if you're if you're interested in that. If you want to install this on your own computer, 
I have these videos here that show you how to do it on Mac, Windows. If you are using a Mac though, you won't have a GPU because the Macs, they don't have NVIDIA GPUs and an NVIDIA GPU is what is absolutely required for this. All of these have Google Colab instructions at the front of it. And this code detects if Colab is running. If it's not, it just sets Colab to false and it doesn't. But this maps your, well, this one doesn't because we don't need a local drive, but the the other more advanced modules when you get get further into the course will map your G drive so that you're able to store files in a permanent location. It just everything works with G drive through Colab Pro. If you're running it on your computer, you're going to actually store these on your local system. So this is the course overview. It is a course primarily in deep learning. We are using Kira's. Pretty much the two games in town right now for deep learning are Kira's and PyTorch, and they're both great. I, I've i worked with both of these. I have more experience with Kira's than PyTorch. There's a bit more overhead in terms of the amount of code that you have to type generally to get something working in PyTorch. So for a course that's focused on the applications of deep learning, at this point anyway, I am choosing Keras just because you're, you're less exposed to the internal workings of the neural networks and we can focus more just on application of these neural networks. The assignments are given here. Icebreaker, that is just to post something in Canvas, introducing yourself. That way, even though this is an online course, you're able to meet each other. Group selection. There's a Kaggle competition. And for this, it changes each semester. So for this semester, I think it's pretty interesting. It's a computer vision one. You are trying to basically detect if a block structure is stable or not stable. So I give you a bunch of images of block towers. They're all 3D rendered. I created these in a program called Blender. And you're supposed to predict, is it stable or is it not? And you get all kinds of different angles, different lighting, so the shadows are gonna be weird in some of these. All completely natural, but you need to look at this and say, okay, is it stable? That one, if I ran physics on it, that would that would stand. Uh, there's nothing unstable about it. Some of these are gonna be really bad lighting. So that's part of the fun of computer vision. That's clearly not stable. There's space there, it would fall. And you're predicting on essentially those those blocks. So this is this is how this one runs. Let me show you one that's not stable, and I'll actually show you the physics run because it, it, it's kind of fun. There you see it it pretty much collapsed. So that was missing two small blocks at the very bottom. Blender is a lot of fun. You can run physics on things like this and even play with gigantic block structures like this one. I won't give you anything that hard for the Kaggle competition. So that's the Kaggle competition. We'll talk more about that as we get to it. The students have a lot of fun with this because Kaggle, it's a, it's a competition. So you see which, which students can come up with the best model for this. You don't really win any prize for this particular competition. The only one that I'll tell you that you will potentially win is the top three teams. I always offer to write a real good LinkedIn endorsement for them that they, with their exploits. The Kaggle in class, it is open to the internet. So there will be people from outside of Washington University that always enter to, to compete with that as well. Usually the students do very well. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what this semester entails. I'll talk more about that in the first the first class session. You also have the class assignments. There are 10 of these. These are somewhat short programming assignments, but they, they usually take you a couple, minimum of a couple of hours to solve. And then the final project is essentially analyzing and reading a paper, an academic paper on current artificial intelligence research and writing, doing a write up on that. The 10 programming assignments, they are all here. So I am your instructor, Jeff Heaton. I have a couple of degrees. I have a Master of Information Management from here at Washington University. I have a PhD in Computer Science from Nova Southeastern University in Florida. I am also a Vice President and Data Scientist at Reinsurance Group of America. I actually frequently hire 
interns from, I usually hire a couple of interns a year, particularly in the summer, from from my students at WashU. So if you're if you're interested in that, let let me know. You get a chance to work on my data science team and do do interesting things. Uh, it's here in St. Louis at the headquarters of RGA. And I'm a senior member of IEEE. You can see me on a variety of social media. I post videos like this and just general videos on AI to my YouTube channel. So I never really intended to become a YouTuber from teaching this, but it's it's up to 38,000 subscribers and growing. So, so who knows? If you find this kind of thing interesting, subscribe to my channel. And even after the class, you will get my latest updates on AI and other things that I'm doing with Python. And GitHub, I've got a lot of stuff posted there as well. And that's me. Some other links that would be useful is Google Colab, Python Anaconda is what we're using. Now deep learning, machine learning in general, traditional software development, which I did for many years before being a data scientist, you send your input data and you create program code and it takes your input data and processes it and gives you output. Machine learning is much better. It's data driven. What does data driven mean? You give the input data and the expected output, your X, your Y to the computer and it produces the program code, which is the neural network. We're going to deal with predictive modeling, which is tabular data. So taking in columns and trying to predict one of them, computer vision, which is a lot of fun, and time series. You could maybe win this, learn to predict the stock market. I probably would not be teaching this course if I had figured out how to predict the stock market, but hey, who knows? We'll learn about regression and classification, but neural networks go beyond your typical regression and classification. The input and the output can be anything. The input can be an image, the output can be a classification, but the input can also be an image and the output another image. So you can, you can create transformations on images, you can generate images like the faces that the GANs do. We'll learn more and more about that as we go through. These are the three, the four luminaries of AI. Jan LeCarn, Jeffrey Hinton, Yashua Bengio, and Andrew Ning. And uh, a nice chart by Andrew Ning. He shows really deep learning. If you don't have much data, it's going to probably underperform. But as you have more data, it is deep learning really begins to shine. Now we're dealing with Python, which is a great language used a lot in machine learning. There's other platforms that you can deal with like MXNet, CNTK, PyTorch, and so on. But we are using Keras for this, this course. I have some links here to help you with the software installation and a general Python introduction. Once you've got Python installed, you should be able to run this. It'll tell you if the GPU is available or not available. And if I run this in Google Colab, this should, I trust myself, just because it's not authored by Google, I trust it. So I'm going to run this and it'll show you the current version. And GPU is not available, I would need to enable it. So if you want to use your GPU in Google Colab, you change runtime type, hardware accelerator, you can use a GPU or even a TPU. We'll see more about TPUs later. Click run, and now it should say GPU available and the current version of TensorFlow. We'll be using a combination of TensorFlow 2.4 if you're using Colab. Colab always has the latest, latest, latest. If you're using a Mac, currently it's on 2.0. If you're using Windows, currently it's on 2.1. That may change even, even weeks from now. I keep all the code completely compatible with those three versions. So that's it. The first assignment is really just a test to see that you can actually run this code and get something submitted. This is, this is basically it. I hope everybody enjoys this semester. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you'll enjoy following along with this class and all of the recordings that go along with it this semester. And if you're interested in seeing all the developments and updates from this class, because I always work very hard to keep it up to date, this is a continuously evolving field, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.